what is up guys in today's video we're going to be going over how we can create a steam games discount app so essentially it's going to load information from an api and it's going to load all the games that are currently on discount in the steam store so it's actually really cool because we're going to get images we're going to get titles and prices and the rating for each steam game that's currently discounted live and also if we go ahead and click on this it's going to take us to a detail screen which of course you can customize in any way you want. But it's going to be a list and it's going to load and yeah, it's some simple project that we can get started with in Swift and Xcode. So it's actually quite exciting and it's definitely recommended if you are a beginner. So that's the app we will be creating today. And the first thing you want to do is go to Xcode and hold Shift Command plus N so we can get started with a new project. Click on app and next. Then for the product name, give your app a name. We can just call it discounts steam. And we want to choose Swift UI and Swift as the language. Then go ahead and click on next. Choose a location for your project and create it. Now I'm actually going to split this tutorial into two parts. The first part is going to create an API request and retrieve the data. And the second part is going to be how we display that information into a list that we can later edit to show what we want. So let's go ahead and get started by closing this sidebar, changing my Mac to an iPhone 13 and making this a bit smaller so we can actually see the code. And let's go ahead and run it just to make sure that everything's working correctly. And as you can see, we have the default Hello World app, which means we're doing great. Now, the first thing we should do is go to our folder and hold Command plus N to create a new Swift file. And we're going to click on Swift file and then click on Next. And we're going to call this Games. So go ahead and do that and click on Create. Now, the first thing we have to do is create a data class or in Swift, we're actually going to be using a struct for this. So it's going to be struct and we're going to call it Game and it will inherit from Codable and Identifiable which just makes the data more identifiable and codable just makes it easier to pass as JSON. So we need these two classes so that we can actually create this data class. And the first field we have to create is the ID. So we're going to type in let ID and that's going to equal a UUID each time we use this class. And this will be unique. So now we have IDs generated for each one of these objects. Next, we actually need to go ahead and look at the JSON itself so we can choose which data fields we want to retrieve. So let's go ahead and go to our web browser. And as you can see right now, I'm using an API by CheapShark. It's 100% free. And I'm going to be leaving that in the video description down below. So you can copy and paste that and end up on the same page that I'm on currently. And if we scroll down under deals, you're going to find a get request that says get list of deals. And we're going to go ahead and copy this link and paste it in Google. And what you should get is a JSON result. And the nice thing about modern web browsers is that it formats it for us. Otherwise you'll probably see something like this, which is quite scary. But if you format it, you'll be able to see all of the data fields. So what we're interested in is the title, the sell price, the normal price, the steam rating percent, and the thumbnail, this one down here. So those are the values I'm going to be using. And let's get started immediately by first referring to the title. So var title, which is of type string, then var normal price, which is of type string as well. And it's very important that you realize that this is camel case and it has to be exactly the same as from the JSON file. Then we're going to go ahead and type in var sell price, which is also of type string. And let's also go back because you might have noticed I'm typing string and it should be quite obvious from the JSON file that if there are quotation marks, it's a string. Otherwise, if there are no quotation marks, it's either an integer, a float or some other data type. So you need to make sure you actually pick the correct data type or else the program will not know how to pass it. Then we have var steam rating percent of type string and the last one I'm going to use is the thumbnail. So var thumb is going to be of type string. And you may have noticed as well that these are not all of the data fields from the JSON. And you're more than welcome to use all of them if you want, but I'm not going to be using all of them. So these ones will suffice. And these are the only ones I'm telling the program that we're going to use. And the compiler is giving me the warning that I made the ID a data type instead of assigning it. 
So make sure to replace that with an equal sign. And it's going to give you this warning, but it's safe to ignore this warning because if you actually try to fix that with the suggestion that the warning gives you, the program crashes. Up next, we're going to create a class called API. And this is going to be extending an observable object, which just means that the data will be read across the program in a much easier fashion. And also we need to provide the at published var, which just helps us with updating the status of the current variable every time it updates so that a lot of variables around the program will know that something changed. So here we're going to have an array of game and we have to add the parentheses. Now we can go ahead and create a function called load data, which will take a URL of type string and we need to create a completion listener. So completion, and we have to provide the at escaping keyword. Then we need to go ahead and create an array of game and an empty function that we will use later. Then we can go ahead and open a block here. And inside this block, we're going to guard let the URL equal a URL. And for the string parameter, we need to provide the URL that we choose to insert. And if that is false for whatever reason, we need to print the URL was invalid, exclamation marks, so people know it's serious and they take us seriously. Then we should also return out of this so nothing crashes. Otherwise, why are you unhappy? You're always unhappy and the program's unhappy because I wrote fun and not function. But right below this guard statement, we're going to go ahead and create a URL session. And it's going to be URL session dot shared dot data task. And inside here, we need to specify a target, which is going to be the URL. And we're going to use data response and the error from this in the following code. So let the games equal try exclamation mark json decoder dot decode and inside here first we want to decode the game dot self from the data that we know is not nil because we went ahead and made sure that this would work then we can go ahead and print the games just for debugging purposes and we also need to create a dispatch queue so that we can try to run this on a thread that will give us the result so async and inside here we have the completion listener which will return to us the games and to make sure that this actually takes place we need to call dot resume so this code is actually going to retrieve the json and it's going to give us all of these fields so that we can actually use it in the ui but now let's go ahead and go to our content view and we can close the sidebar because we will not be using that anymore and as soon as this text view loads we're going to go ahead and call on appear and we don't need the code inside here we just call on appear and we open a block so as soon as this view loads it's going to call the following function and to do this we're going to call api with parentheses dot load data and now we need to go to the api copy this link and paste it inside right here as for the completion we can go ahead and delete this section right there and open a block and inside the block we'll type in games in so for the games in the completion, we can go ahead and assign the self.games, which we will create in a moment, to the current games. And we're going to get an error immediately because we do not have a games variable in the content view. And to do this, we have to go ahead and create a state variable. So at state var games, which is going to equal an array of games with the initializer. And this is actually the third time I make this mistake this should be a game and not games. But as soon as we do that, all of the errors should go away. And when we run the program, we should finally get the JSON data loaded into the app. So right here, we can see that it says, hello world. But if we go to the app and actually open the debugging console, we're going to see a lot of data from the API, the exact same data that we got from the web browser. You can see right here, discount steam.game, it has an ID, a title, a normal price, a sell price, and Steam rating percent, followed by the thumbnail that we will use to display inside the list. But if you got this exact same result, that means you are ready for video number two, which I will upload tomorrow. Or if you're watching this in the past, of course, you'll see it on the sidebar and we can continue over there. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.